<laughs> Do you know, I've led quite an exciting life. I've jumped out of planes and water skied and skied down the Matterhorn, well, part of it. But there's something about the sight of seeds germinating that I find just as exciting in a different sort of way as all those kind of uh, crazy activities that I've been lucky enough to have a go at. So here we have our rhododendron um, that we we sowed ooh, well, a month, maybe six weeks ago. Here we go, the fourth of the first. Uh, we're now the twenty-fourth. So that's six, seven weeks ago, um, and we have our lovely ambrosia bush tomatoes and some of our sun cherry. Um, smile um, tomato seedlings and uh, oh it's just fantastic to see them from that little bit of dust I mean here's some here's a few spare um, rhododendron seeds you know they look like nothing like a little bit of paper um, and they turn into new life that will within six months will burst into flower and look like this <sighs> Sometimes plants just don't obey the rules, do they? <laughs> this is our rather delicious Purple Bells Rhododendron, um, which is kind of sold and grown as a, a summer kind of patio climber, bedding plant, patio plant extraordinaire. Um, but I'm filming in the, what was it, the 5th? the 5th of January, and this guy is still in flower. It's had frost, it's even had a bit of snow on there. Um, uh, it's been in flower since July, uh, last summer. Hardly gets any sun here, it's in the shade now. Um, hasn't had sun, I don't think, for a, a few weeks, to be honest. And so what I'm gonna try and do is to grow some of these, oops, almost fell over. Um, uh, from seed for this year. I, I bought this as a plant in the early summer, late spring, um, which is fine, but um, um, I think I paid about five or six pound for it. Um, I'm gonna collect some of these seed heads here. So as, as the flowers finish, you get this little kind of balls of, um, of seeds. So I'm gonna pick some of these just now. They come off quite easily. There you go. And um, break them open and see if we can get, uh, there's the seeds there. Yeah, and we'll um, see if we can, um, they'll need some protection, so we're gonna do, I'm going to do these up at the school in the greenhouse and see if we can't uh, grow some of these ourselves um, for, this, for this summer. Will you join me on this exciting journey? Right then, here we go. I've um, brought those kind of seed heads back to the, uh, the school uh, little kind of greenhouse and propagation shed here. We call it the outdoor classroom, but basically it's somewhere where it's a little bit warmer. We've got ourselves, the pupils actually made this little kind of heated um, bed here. It's got a, a warming cable uh, going through underneath there. So that just provides a little bit of kind of bottom heat underneath these uh, these cuttings that we've got going here and some seeds. Uh, and certainly can can help this time of the year. We're doing this in the middle of uh, of winter, doing this in in early January, and uh, looking at the um, the seed catalogues and so on. Um, late winter, early spring seems to be the time to uh, grow rhododendron. I've I've tried it once before successfully, but I ended up with tiny little seedlings that were there kind of in in late spring and. It, it was all a bit too late really. Um, so we're gonna see if we can get these to grow a bit earlier, get them germinated and growing through the spring so I can plant them out um, at a decent size in late May, early June. Previous years I've done that, but I've had to go and buy a plant ready grown, which is fine, you know, it cost me only about five, five, six pounds, something like that. But let's have a go and see if we can grow these from seed ourselves. So we've taken these little kind of um, uh, dead flowers back and I haven't got my glasses. Oh yes, can you see? Look at those seeds, there's loads of them there. Um, so let's just put that back down on the windowsill a minute and we're likely going to scatter these seeds all over the compost and the surface there. Now this is some quite sandy, well-drained um, compost. If you can get seed compost, ready mixed with sand in, great 
Let's see if we can get any more. Oh, look at that. Loads of seeds. Wow. So we need a few of those to germinate and we'll be laughing. So, yeah, well-drained compost um, with sand added to it. Seed, seed and cutting compost if you can find it. But I've just taken um, multi-purpose and added a little bit of sand, uh, sand to it. And now we're going to sprinkle a little bit of soil. Only a very, very thin covering of soil on top of there. Just uh, let's go across to the, um, the compost tray. Okay, and we're just going to very, 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 very likely scatter some compost over there. There we go. Probably less than a millimetre's worth of um, compost scattered over there. Now begins the challenge of having it moist, but not too moist. So I'm going to use a, a small watering can here and just trickle some water over there. There we are. That'll be enough. He's going to get good light there um, and a nice little bit of bottom heat. I suppose, you know, what we want to try and do is get the temperature, I'm guessing here, um, uh, kind of 60 degrees um, uh, Fahrenheit or, or above for a, for a few weeks just to get them to germinate. If my guess was wrong, you'll see the text appearing now on the screen, correcting my mistake. Um, uh, the thermostat uh, on here for the heated bench is at about uh, 22 uh, Fahren, uh, centigrade. Um, so the actual kind of temperature underneath there will be, uh, you know, kind of 2022, 20, um, which means that uh, it's probably going to be a couple of degrees cooler up, up here. And then when it comes to keeping them watered, I will probably come along and give it an occasional spray like that um, rather than giving it too much water unless I can see that it's gone really dry uh, once they germinate they will then start to take up a little bit more water um, but then you just got to be careful that you don't give them too much um, if the compost the golden rule is if the compost feels damp to touch it probably doesn't need watering the other way to check is to lift the pot here that that feels quite heavy at the moment so um, that, that's an indication there's plenty of moisture in there um, so yeah, don't overwater uh, seeds or, or young seedlings because they can easily rot off. So, here we go. Exciting times. New year, new new challenge. Um, we'll keep you posted. Hopefully, in a month or two's time, we'll have some green shoots of spring to, um, to show you. <laughs> Do you know, I've led quite an exciting life. I've jumped out of planes and water skied and skied down the Matterhorn. Well, part of it. But... There's something about the sight of seeds germinating that I find just as exciting in a different sort of way as all those kind of uh, crazy activities that I've been lucky enough to have a go at. So here we have our rhododendron um, that we we sowed ooh, well, a month, maybe six weeks ago. Here we go, the fourth of the first, and uh, we're now the twenty-fourth. So that's six, seven weeks ago. Um, and we have our lovely ambrosia bush tomatoes and some of our sun cherry um, smile um, tomato seedlings. And uh, oh, it's just fantastic to see them from that little bit of dust. I mean, here's some, here's a few spare um, rhododendron seeds. You know, they look like nothing, like a little bit of paper. Um, and they turn into new life that will, within six months, will burst into flower and look like this now and of course these tomatoes whoa, they're going to be gorgeous in the summer and in the autumn definitely i think we we finally finished picking the ambrosia tomatoes last november um so well we look forward to that um what can happen particularly when we're growing on a windowsill um or in a kind of a slightly darkened room like this is that the seedlings can you see they're leaning towards the light so all we do is once every day or so is twist it around 180 degrees 
so they'll be staring at you. Hello, you all right? But within a few hours, they will start to straighten up and go towards the light, and then you'll need to turn them back again. So these guys, here we turn them around like that, so they're leaning slightly towards me. Same with these guys, which are currently leaning towards the window. Hello, hello, my little darlings. Um, there you go. Um, we can have a quick look actually in the um, in the greenhouse and see what a difference it makes when you've got more like, well, it's not 360 light, but probably about 280 degrees light. Uh, whereas here we've only got kind of at the most kind of 180 degrees, more like 150 degrees of, 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 of light um, through the window there. Let's have a look in the greenhouse. Here we go. Um, here's our um, big potfuls and smaller packfuls of um, Californian poppy there, um, which uh, we collected the seed ourselves last uh, last summer and autumn, and they've come up uh, very strongly, transplanted them about a week ago. They look a bit sad when they're initially transplanted because you damage the roots and so on. Um, and you just need to get the balance right between keeping the compost moist, dampish, but not too wet. So otherwise you can get problems with them, what they call damping off, you know, kind of rotting off because they're just a bit too damp. So same with these seeds really. So here's some more, Whee, what's this, hollyhocks coming up there and uh, these, uh, these teasels. And you can see with those, they're not really leaning very much, if, if at all, because they've got a much more uh, all round light, uh, which prevents them from kind of leaning one way. And there's some uh, Rudbeckia there coming up nicely, going straight up, that's what we want. So if you're sowing seeds and transplanting young seedlings, keep the compost damp but not soaking wet allow any excess to um to drain off um so that you just give them a chance to fill out um the um the compost with their refreshed root growth and uh, my what i generally find is within a couple of weeks you'll start to get new growth on the top from the leaves and that's a sign that they've kind of re-established their roots after the shock of being transplanted and then you'll find that as they start to grow more leaves, they're going to be demanding more water. And then you'll see the compost drying out more regularly. Um, and you give it a little bit more water more regularly. Uh, so that's all there is to it. Um, raising seedlings from seeds, transplanting them and getting all excited about spring. <laughs> uh, for those of you that saw previous video from when, when we visited the... Um, the amazing gardens on uh, Tresco, and we managed to get a couple of um, of these um, bulb bills uh, from the, how do you say it, Fur Korea? Um, uh, whatever it's called, ama amazing thing. And as yet, no, no sign of any root growth there. If anything, that's a bit too damp. It's, um, get rid of that weed there. It's, uh, it's had a bit of a drink um, this morning. And I find that um, early morning, you know, kind of just after dawn, well, eight nine ten o'clock something like that is a good time to water because it gives the um the compost a chance to drain through to dry out a bit before the um before the night and of course because they sit dormant overnight you don't really want them sat in compost that's too wet when they're that dormant so it's all happening um we're into the third week of february and spring is starting to unfold right before our very eyes <laughs>